Texas RPLS Q&A review. Question number two. The board shall employ blank to conduct the administrative affairs of the board. A general counsel, an executive director, an investigator, a commissioner, or a standing committee. In order to answer this question, you need to know two things. Well, really just one thing. And the one thing you've got to know is that the Texas board is broken up into two wings. And the way that the board gets set up is by statute. The Texas legislature creates a set of acts. This is a law. And the law makes the TBPLS. And the law also lays out the basic functions of the agency. Once the law is written, the board itself, the board members, drafts what's called the rules. And the rules are really specific rules for you and me, the land surveyor. So the Texas legislature makes the board by an act, and then the board creates rules which govern individual surveyors. Pretty simple. Like freebies? Subscribe to the NLC YouTube channel for free course previews, weekly how-to videos of actual questions, and lots more. Just click subscribe below. Make sure to click the bell next to subscribe to be notified of new video releases. If you were to read some of these acts and rules, you would notice that they both create two different items, a board and an administrative staff. The board is comprised of so many members, RPLS members, we've got LSLS members, members of the public. We've also even got a board attorney. These guys are the people who meet a couple of times a year in Austin, and the board is really the decision maker for the board of surveyors. But the board only works a couple of days per year. Well, if the board's going to work, you know, four days per year every year, how is all this paperwork going to get processed? You know, paperwork to become SITs, paperwork to become RPLSs, paperwork about continuing education. This is a bureaucracy, folks, and the bureaucracy needs people. Therefore, the board members hire staff, and this is the second prong of TBPLS. These staff members, currently Tony Estrada is the executive director. Tony hires different people like secretaries and paper pushers, and these people are the ones, if you call the board, they pick up the phone, they answer your questions. Believe it or not, they're pretty nice. So you've got the members who meet a couple times a year who are the real decision makers, and you've also got the administrative staff who is headed by... Let's read. According to statute, the board shall employ an executive director to conduct the administrative affairs of the board, blah, blah, blah. And that basically means the executive director is the chief paper pusher. He makes sure that all the complaints, the applications for licensure, the requests for information, they all get funneled to the board members a couple of times per year. The correct answer is executive director. Not to be confused with a non-executive director who plays ping pong all day. Let's go back for a brief moment and let's check out the detractors, the wrong answers that look like the right answers. A, general counsel. No, a general counsel is basically the board attorney. He handles all the legal problems, but he is not the chief administrator. C, investigator. The investigator investigates board complaints. He's not an administrator. He is like a detective. And if you get reported for your bad deeds, the investigator is going to show up and ask you 20 questions. D, 
a commissioner. The commissioner is not a commissioner of the board. He is the commissioner of the general land office, so that's not right. And finally, E, a standing committee. The standing committee is committees on licensure, committees on complaints, committees on CEUs. These guys are just a subset of the board. So if the board is nine people, a standing committee is typically three or four. So that's not the correct answer either. So now that you have kind of the lingo of how the board operates and some of the terms, be on guard for other questions asking you about investigators, commissioners, and general counsels. And since you've taken the time to not only discover the right answer, but also discover why the other answers are incorrect, you are now equipped to answer not this one question, but this one question plus four others. So keep studying, folks.